I thought the view from the dugout was bad. Terry, you pitchers watch the game from this right field corner? You ought to be paid to watch a game from here. I am. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> he is. But Bruce Benedict isn't. He's been paid for that view behind home plate. But this summer he was in a battle for his job and often found himself sitting down here watching his replacement, Alex Trevino. Here's Alex Trevino batting second. Trevino takes the first pitch, ball low and outside. Trevino is batting 321 during a seven game hitting streak and he's nine for 28. He's uh, been hitting the ball pretty good. Been hitting the ball real well since. There's another rope. <laughs> another rope. Baseball talk for a hard hit ball. The last thing Bruce Benedict needed to see coming off the bat of Alex Trevino. Bruce's baseball life had been turned upside down. It all started with a minor bit of baseball business back in April. A backup catcher from the Cincinnati Reds, Trevino, for a player to be named later. Quickly and quietly, Alex changed uniforms. I was sitting in the clubhouse playing some cars and uh, Ben Rapp uh, called me to his office and he told me, uh, you've been traded to Atlanta. And uh, I say, well, uh, well, thank you, you know. There was nothing earth shaking about Alex's immediate role with the Braves. He was dispatched to the bullpen as Bruce Benedict's backup. But this wasn't Cincinnati, it was Atlanta. And sometimes it takes a change of scenery to light a fire under a player. For the next few weeks, Trevino's star burned brightly. Pitches outside, Trevino's throw right on the money, got him. Throughout Trevino's phenomenal streak of success, Bruce played spectator and good sport. As I said, your goal is to win a lot of ball games, and I think that that's Joe's utmost concern, and Alex has come in here and done a super job, and, and you've got to give him a lot of credit for, for the work that he's done, and, and uh, all the ball games that he's played, we, we've won, and that's, and that's the name of the game, is win as many as you can, as I said. So I think every player likes to get in there and play a little bit, but you can't argue with success and a guy that's doing the job. We all have the same uniform. We're trying to win baseball games, and uh, however we go about it is really insignificant right now. We still think very highly of Benedict, and it's a long season, and uh, you come to find out <clears throat> during the course of playing this game or managing it or watching it or whatever that uh, you can't make any absolutes uh, for any uh, one day or any one week because it's 162 games and you're going to need everybody to contribute. But it was Trevino doing most of the contributing. The afternoon of May 13th, in the middle of a baseball miracle, Alex Trevino. The Pirates lead at 8-7, the Braves need a hit to win it. The 1-1. Line drive. Base hit. Here comes Cornell. The Braves win. The Braves win. Oh, my goodness. A two-out. No one on base. No ball. Two-strike rally. I'm very excited to be here. What can I say? Uh, I'm going through a great moment and uh, with the right team you know with the manager who really uh, gave me all the confidence in the world when I play for him a few years back and this is just a different feeling the feeling that I never had before you know and again and again and again I've been a loser for five years so <laughs> it's quite a difference Although it's disappointing, that's a blow to your ego and your pride when all of a sudden, boom, you're an all-star player two out of the last three years, and then all of a sudden they say, you know, you go from the penthouse to the outhouse in a matter of a month. You say, I, you know, I would like those things to happen to me, so, you know, what's good for that they're happening to Alex because it's a good feeling for him. By the middle of May, the job of Braves catcher had become a two-man task hey, with Trevino going one way and Benedict another. And they're different catchers, you know, they both receive the ball well. Uh, Alex probably throws a little bit better, and he runs a little bit better. And uh, so far this year, has hit a little bit better. And that's why he's catching a little bit more right now. Alex knew the next time he returned to Cincinnati, 
it would be in Atlanta blue. He was ready. He toted his 325 average into Riverfront Stadium and was welcomed back with all the enthusiasm of a war hero. Alex earned his stripes. Good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you. Okay. Okay. Look, you chance to play a little bit. Damn right. Proud of you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. How's you doing? Good, man. Thank you, man. I'm glad, man. Happy. I didn't want to talk to you while you was here. Why do well, to you now? that's the way it works now. That's the way it works. Volanta, the greatest thing ever happened. Reporters who hadn't written about him. Fans who knew him only as the guy who couldn't cut it as Johnny Bench's replacement. They were all there for the return of Trevino. In game three, he served notice. Alex was back in town. Come on, Alex, show me something. Alex, come on out. Now the 0-1 on the way, driven down that third base side by Kranzicki. This is going to tie it up. Randy Jackson scores. Jorgensen around third. He will score. Rounding third, heading for home. Rafael Ramirez, the throw there. He's in there safely. Surely this was Alex Trevino's finest hour. Right now I'm going through a great moment and, uh, you know, as soon as I try to struggle, you'll, you'll see Bennett behind the plate and, uh, and I know that. But until such time, Bruce found himself in the shadows. How can I be in the All-Star game one year and just all of a sudden feel like I'm not even capable of helping our club win? I mean, they've given me that feeling and that hurts. Yeah, sometimes baseball players hurt. That catcher's gear Bruce Benedict is wearing doesn't keep him from hurting inside. He'll be the first to tell you there are no guarantees in this game. Bruce has learned how to handle success. That's not as easy as it sounds. This year, he learned how to handle failure. You get to think that baseball owes you something after a while. Or Torrey, or Gibson, or the organization. Hey, these guys owe me. No, they don't owe me. They don't owe me a thing. I owe baseball. I made more money in baseball and had more fun and done more things, you know, than any situation probably that I could have gotten myself into. Baseball doesn't owe me.